So in episode 77 of The Simpsons, Bart wants to play an April Fool's joke on Homer, so he decides to put one of his Duff beers in a paint shaker. He shakes it up, puts it in the fridge, and when Homer opens it, there's a gigantic explosion that happens that blows up his whole house, puts Homer in a coma. So today I wanted to test how big of an explosion you can get by putting soda in a paint shaker. And then after my paint shaker experiment, I'm going to show you if the pressure of a soda bottle really increases when you shake it. You might be surprised. Okay, so this is how I'm going to be measuring how far it goes. So I'll open the soda can right here, and then I'll measure how far the drops go on these paper towels. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake the soda up for about five minutes or so and then I'm gonna open it and see how far it sprays out. And I'll control it with just opening a regular soda and see how far it sprays out. And then I'll compare it to just shaking it by hand and see how far it sprays out. Okay, this is an unshaken can of soda. Three, two, one. Okay, let's measure how far that went. Okay. There's the furthest out one, it's about three feet. Okay, now let's try just a hand shaking one before we do the paint shaker. Okay, give it a good shake. Okay, three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> okay, so this one went far. <laughs> All the way down here. <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna have to extend my paper towels. Okay, let's mark this one. 10 feet 21 inches. Okay, now let's shake one up for five minutes and see how far it goes. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's transfer it over here really fast. Here go. Three, two, one. Okay, looks like our farthest drop is about right here. This is like halfway, not quite to where our just shaken by hand even got. Okay, our shaker got about eight and a half feet. So in case that was just a fluke, let's try one more shake just to see, see if it didn't, because that one kind of went more out the side. Let's see if I can get a better open and see how far it goes. Okay, shake it again. Three, two, one. Okay, so pretty consistently, that one got a little further. Let's see how far that went. So here was our last one. Here's our current one. And there's where our shaken by hand. Okay, so we're gonna do another hand shaken one just to make sure the first one wasn't a fluke. Okay, here's our second hand shaken one. Okay, so for our final results, three feet was our not shaken can. You can see our two paint shaker ones and a hand one right there. And then another hand one at 10 foot 21 inches. Okay, so why didn't the paint shaken can go even further? The answer lies in what actually makes a soda explode when you shake it. So when you shake a soda, it doesn't actually increase the pressure despite what you may have heard or what you may have thought. I'm willing to fight you on this and I'm gonna test it. What's actually making it explode is that this gas pocket on the top gets dispersed into little tiny bubbles and then when you open it up, those little tiny bubbles expand and it pushes all of the liquid out the top and that's what we think is the explosion. But the pressure actually stayed exactly the same. I'm gonna show you that the pressure does not increase when you shake a can of soda or a bottle of soda. So I have here a soda lid where I can actually measure the pressure on top. 
Okay, so let's measure the soda unshaken first. You'll notice that even before I shake it, at room temperature, it is rock hard. I can barely indent it. Because that's the argument that a lot of people say. They say, if I shake the bottle, I can feel the pressure increase. But you'll notice that it's already rock hard. Okay, first let's check what the unshaken soda bottle pressure is. Okay, I've got 34.5. Shake it. Thirty-four. So there was no considerable pressure increase from shaking the bottle of soda. So here's the caveat to this though. That doesn't mean that when you always shake a bottle of soda, it doesn't increase the pressure. That's because when you shake it, it is slightly increasing the temperature. And when you increase the temperature, that does increase the pressure of the can. So when you go pick up a cold soda from the store and you start shaking it, you're actually increasing the temperature a lot because you're increasing the heat transfer rate by shaking it. And it's also in your warm hands. And so you're heating the bottle up when you're shaking it. So the actual pressure increase isn't coming from the shaking per se, but it's coming from the temperature increase. So if you have a bottle of soda that's at room temperature already or close to the temperature of your hand or the environment you're in, shaking it doesn't increase the pressure by any measurable amount. That's because like I said, the soda bottle is already at equilibrium. And when something's at equilibrium, you can't change anything unless you change some state. So when you open it, that will change the pressure. But if you keep it in its same state and no change in temperature, then you can't increase the pressure of the bottle. Another caveat to mention is that the bottle will only not increase in pressure if the bottle is already at equilibrium. If it's not at equilibrium yet, then it will increase in pressure. For example, if I open this right now and release the pressure, and now close it back up. The pressure is going to be pretty low because I just lit it out. It's only two PSI. And it's not at equilibrium yet. So when I shake it, I'm returning it to equilibrium, meaning that the CO2 that was dissolved in the liquid is now going to the gas phase, and so it is increasing the pressure here. So now if I measure the pressure, at 36 PSI. So shaking an already opened bottle of soda that has not sat long enough to get to equilibrium will increase the pressure. But the point is, I'm going back to Bart Simpson here. I have this unopened bottle of Sprite or some other unopened bottle of soda or carbonated beverage. If I shake it, it will not increase the pressure. Hey, thanks for watching everybody. Do you wanna know why I was using Diet Coke through the whole thing? It's because it doesn't have sugar in it, so when you get it all over the place, it makes it a lot easier to clean up and it doesn't make everything sticky. That's actually the reason why whenever you see anything with Mentos and Coke, it's usually Diet Coke because it's so much easier to clean up. It's not actually because Diet Coke works better with Mentos or anything, but it's because Diet Coke doesn't have sugar in it and so it's not sticky. And if you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. You can hit the bell to be notified also when my latest video comes out, and I'll see you next time.